Hello, I'm Rick Torbett and welcome to Better Basketball. To commemorate this event, I want to sort of answer a question that's been asked of me since 2008. Where did Read and React come from and what could possibly possess me to create it and how did it get to this point? Well, I can't answer all that. So instead, I'll give you the timeline. I started coaching as a head high school boys basketball coach in 1979. Now I'm going to jump to 1997. Good seasons, bad seasons, tried a little bit of everything, just like most coaches do. Coached the way I'd been coached, ran practice with the same drills that, that uh, my coaches had, okay? But in 1997, I'll tell one little story here. Uh, at the end of a season, uh, we just missed going to the state tournament by losing a game by one or two points on a last second shot. So I'm having our, our last supper of the season with my assistant, Dan Knutson, and uh, I said, all right, Dan, go ahead. Tell me what I did wrong. Let's, let's, let's uh, pick this apart. And he said, got one question for you. In the last two minutes of the game, when it was anybody's game, both teams were pressing, trapping, uh, no one can run their stuff, the lead's changing with every basket, did we have the best five players on the floor? And I said, well, Dan, we, we had the best, uh, you know, my best one, two, three, four, five. And he said, that's not what I asked. Did we have the best five basketball players on the floor? And I said, well, Dan, if we do that, we can't run our system. And here's where it began. He said, maybe there's something wrong with a system that doesn't allow you to put your five best basketball players on the floor. Now, that was kind of a flippant statement, I guess. Uh, we went on, uh, we kept on eating and talking, but that's the thorn that began to prick my brain from that point on. In fact, later on, we, uh, we brought the question up again uh, just a month or two later, and, and he said, look, uh, uh, if you could do it all over again, what would you do? And I said, I'd teach my players just how to play the game, no set plays, no, you know, none of this barking orders from the sideline, that kind of thing. And he said, well, let's do it. And I said, I don't know how. And he said, you're the head coach. I said, well, <laughs> let me... Let me see if I can find it. Well, I searched, began to search. Couldn't find it anywhere. One-on-one, -on -one, two-on-two, three-on-three. -on -three. Yeah, we've got that down as a basketball community. As soon as you go to five-on-five, -five, it's some form of coach control, set plays, continuity, something of that, you know, coach is the decision maker. Well, let me now jump to 2001 because I couldn't find, I looked all over, I couldn't find a system that just started with your players don't know anything about anything, and we're going to move to five players playing five on five as a coordinated team. Couldn't find it, okay? But I'm going to fast forward down to 2001. Uh, Brant Furco, former uh, assistant coach of mine, uh, went in with me, started better basketball. Now I'm going to jump to 2003. I'm in Laredo, Texas. I am training 15 players from all over in a four-week camp, nine to six every day. We're going to be scrimmaging uh, every day. We're going to scrimmage the uh, second-tier Olympic team from Mexico. What do I teach these players? None of them are from the same team. I've got college players. I've got a couple of uh, uh, European pros. I've got high school players. What am I going to teach them? So I started putting together all the pieces that I had up until then. And like I say, 2003, the epiphany kind of hit me. Oh my gosh, if we just dropped the positions and went to just spots on the floor, if I link it together, I'm not going to go into all that stuff that put it together maybe some other time, I could do this. I could pull it off, okay? Well, I went back. I thought, here's, here's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life coaching. And better basketball took off. I had to make a decision. Do I go with better basketball or do I stick to what I've been doing so I had to go with my heart, and uh, I did something most folks wouldn't think to do. I don't think they would do it. I, I gave it away. I gave it away to my friends. So from 2004 to 2008, uh, uh, two friends that come to my mind, Carter Wilson, a boys coach uh, here in uh, uh, Decatur, um, Georgia, and Buster Brown, a girls coach, both of them 30-year-plus veterans, 
uh, pretty much seen everything under the sun, coach of the years, uh, state championships under their belt. They took it and ran with it. Gave me great feedback for four years. And then uh, Coach Brown actually kind of talked me into uh, uh, taking it public, saying, look, this is too good to keep on your own. You just you need to go public with this. So I did it in August 2008. Uh, see, actually, the second this is um, the second version, maybe, no, third version. My first version was in my mind in 2003 and in a few notes. And then I had to like put it out in a plan on paper from 2004 to eight. And then I, had to, I, I rethought it after taking everything in the last four years with my, my friends uh, to put it on video, just rethought it all. It's kind of like the third version. Uh, and I, I did something that I don't think uh, most smart business people would do. I didn't know any better. I put it out there with nothing but its own merit to carry it. To carry it. I, I hadn't won an NCAA championship with it. Uh, I was n there was no giant big name behind it. I just said, here it is. It'll either stand or fall on its own merit. I picked the name Read and React because positionless basketball, the positionless offense, no one was talking about that. They wouldn't even know what I was talking about. It would be too strange. And then we had our first coaching clinic the month after that in Emanuel College, uh, led by uh, Coach T.J. Rosine, uh, uh, picked it up and won the NCAA National Championship with it the first year right, right out of the chute, starting nobody over six foot two. Now I'm jumping to 2010. I got so much good feedback from you, from the coaches out there, uh, poking little holes here and there, corrections, uh, enough that I said, okay, I got to come up with version four, uh, the one you see today that's on, that's on video. And it took off again. So here we are in 2015, and the idea of positionless basketball is breaking into the mainstream. But if you're a read and react coach, you already have a head start on positionless basketball. You're part of a movement that's pushing the boundaries. Think about it. It's no longer strange to you to consider no positions, just spots. It's our everyday language to talk about clearly defined decision makers and reactors. Moving the decision box from the point of the pass to the lane, linking all actions together with five-player coordination, and training the players to take care of the moment-by-moment -moment decisions while we manage the bigger things. Well, look, I don't want to get into that. I simply want to say thanks to everyone that's helped make this happen. Keep sending us your success stories. Don't be shy. You're part of a movement that will change basketball for the better, and you probably don't even know it. And I'll promise you this, unless my time on earth runs out first, I will not waver, I will not stop. Myself, Rich, and everyone at Better Basketball will continue to spearhead this positionless movement until the read and react offense becomes simply offense.